Um, I'm not going to go over the announcements in the bulletin. I'm just going to say to just keep the people in the prayer list in your prayers. Uh, uh, pray for them consistently. Pray for our pastor as he's out on the road. Pray for our pastor emeritus. He's not feeling well again. And uh, just keep these people in mind uh, consistently especially the people that are on the on the list in the bulletin. I know they would appreciate it, and uh, um, hopefully, eventually, we can start seeing some of these names being taken off as we see some uh, some some God working and and uh, taking care of some of these issues that they have that, that has them on this list. Uh, I'd like everybody to turn to Genesis chapter 32. And I'm going to be reading, it's kind of a long text this evening, uh, but um, I believe it'll be worth it. Uh, it's going to be uh, verses 24 through 32. And like I said, it's kind of a long text, but uh, this, is a, this is a message that, that uh I, I get I get on YouTube a lot and listen to different preachers. Uh, most of the time, I listen to Dr. Hiles and some of his, uh, a lot of his old messages. And sometimes I go a little, you know, further away and you know listen to other people that I don't really know. And uh, there was a mention of uh, of this passage in in one of those, and and it kind of stuck with me. It's one of those things where you hear it or you see it or you read it and it's in the back of your mind and, and it just it never quite goes away. And and this this is this was one of those one of those passages that it it's probably been probably a good six months. And I've thought about it and thought about it, built on it, built on it, and everything. And I I mean I've got this amazing outline in my head. For this message, uh, but I just never wrote it down. You know, didn't have time, too tired, whatever. Uh, but and then Sarah called me this afternoon and said, "Hey, what are you doing after after work?" I was like, "Well, I got church. You know that. That's a given. Wednesday night." And she's like, "Okay. Well, um, well, I kind of heard you were preaching." I was like, oh, okay. I was like, well, I thought Jake was going to be home. She's like, well, he was, but, and dad's not feeling good. So, like, you know what? Uh, okay. I mean, I don't have anything ready, but uh, what I have in my head, I mean, it's basically more than what I had the last time I had to preach. So, so here we go. Uh, so, um, uh, the, uh, but anyways, the, the uh, um, with thinking about it for as long as for as long as it's been on my mind and everything I built on it, I had different thoughts about it, and uh, it, it it it's brought me to, I mean, several realizations. I mean, in, in my own personal life. My personal life, my my married life, my my life I have here at work and everything, and uh, and and hopefully it can be a it can be a blessing to to you all and the people that are online uh, that are that might be watching this. Um, so let's all right. Let me let me just go ahead and read it. Then we'll pray and then I'll I'll get into it. Okay. Um, it's Genesis thirty two, verse twenty four. And Jacob was left alone and wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. The man being an angel, we all know the story, it was, a, it was an angel from God. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob, and he said, thy name shall be, shall 
be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince thou hast a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Pen Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh until this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and the sinew that shrank. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for everything that you give us, all the blessings that you, that you give us. Uh, a lot of blessings we don't deserve, but you love us and you give us bl these blessings anyways. I want to thank you for bringing the, the few here uh, to, to hear the message and uh, the, to, to, to hopefully be blessed by the message. Lord, I ask for your help to give me the words to say, to, to bring to bring what the, the thoughts that are in my mind that, that I, I know that you've been working on, putting in there for a couple months now, help me to, to get those out into words to relay this message and uh, be with us tonight. Help me to, to stay on point and, and, and to be a blessing, Lord. In your name, amen. Okay, so Jacob... He went and he sent his, his wife and his, all of his belongings ahead of him, which is in the passage uh, before what I started to read. And he wrestled an angel, and the angel touched the hollow of his, hollow of his thigh. And it says that, that uh, uh, it was out of joint. So it, Jacob had a hold of the angel so tight, wouldn't let him go. He would not let him go and said, I'm not letting you go until you give me my blessing. And the angel's like, bro, come on, I got to go. So he touches his leg, he dislocates his hip. Okay, now, I've never had a dislocated hip, but I've heard stories and read things that as, it is probably one of the most painful things that you can stay conscious for. And so even with that, when his hip was dislocated, he still, he still held on. He held on to the angel. He's like, I'm not letting you go. I want my blessing. I want my blessing, and I'm not letting you go until, until you give it to me. Well, as we all know, like I read, the angel gave him his blessing, and I, I am assuming, because it doesn't really say that after he let go, the hip was put back into place, and the ligaments, they did their thing, and they shrank, and he ended up having a limp. He halted on his thigh. Now, with that, obviously there's going to be a limp. He limped, he limped away, and he had a limp for the rest of his life. So the basic, the, 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 the basic thing that, that, I'm try, that I'm getting at is with, with when he had this encounter with a messenger from God, the angel, he had this encounter, had the encounter that he received his blessing. He, he had no choice but to show a sign of what he had received. Whether he wanted it or not, he got it. And with that, bringing it into today, today's day and age, with everything that we live in, when we receive a blessing... Why don't we show that? Why, there should be some sign that we received a blessing. We should have some kind of, of, of light to show the light of, of what God's done for us, of a blessing that he's done, to show the world something's different about, something is different about you in what God has done for you. Now, there's, there, there's many things that we can be thankful for. 
that we can consider blessings. A lot of people today, they're like, oh, that's just karma. That's the universe smiling on you. You know, that's garbage, whatever. I mean, you know, I mean, simply put, I mean, this is God's earth. We're God's children. You know what? The universe had nothing to do with it. It was the creator of the universe that gave us what we have and gave us that blessing. So why are we going around saying, the universe is good to me today. Why not just say God's good to me? And if people want to laugh at you and everything, then fine, let them. Because you know what? Whatever. He didn't bless you. He blessed me. This is my blessing. So might as well give him the glory for it and let everybody know, let everybody show, show everybody what you got and how it's affected your life. Now, the... Uh, as far as the blessings, when we wake up in the morning, we're breathing air. God's blessing us. We, we should be wake up, go out into the world, and, and like this, our light, there should be a difference. A Sunday morning, uh, Pastor Jake told a story about when he was at the, um, at the, uh, the museum uh, in Texas. Um, I can't remember the name of it. The, the Lexington? the Lexington, where he met a guy. This guy had been through the worst imaginable medical experiences that you could possibly be go through. I think he said he had mesothelioma or something like that. And the treatment that you have to go through that, just listening to it sounded horrific. I mean, they literally gut you and burn you, and they keep doing that until it's gone. But Jake, Pastor Jake said that when he was talking to this guy, there was something different about him. There was a glow about him. And in talking to this man, talking to this gentleman, come to find out, yes, he was saved. Yes, he had accepted Jesus. He knew Christ. He knew where he was going. He knew where his eternal destination was going to be. And because of Knowing this, knowing the blessing that he had, he, there was an outward show that there was something different about this man. And Jake noticed it. Jacob picked up on it almost immediately. And they talked and they, they went through and I, I, I gathered that they had kind of walked through the muse museum so kind of together talking the whole time. But this man, he had a blessing. His blessing was life. God blessed him by giving him life, giving him a second chance, a second, third, maybe fourth chance. And that was his blessing, and he wasn't going to hide it. He openly told Jake, yes, I know Jesus. I know where I'm going. When, when I'm at work, there are a lot of times that it's very difficult for, uh, for me to talk about the things that I want to talk about when I'm at work because of the fact that it is funded by several government agencies. Uh, and according to two of these agencies or rule, sets of rules, regulations, whatever, I, I'm not allowed to talk about anything religious. I can't go by somebody at Christmas time and say Merry Christmas because they could take offense to that and they could sue me. It's 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 a it's a violation of the of the rules. Um so with that most of the time I'm not allowed to talk about anything God. I'm not allowed to talk about anything Bible. I'm not allowed to talk about uh uh, the the experiences that I've been through that God has brought me through because of these rules. Because, well, I mean, plainly put, I could get fired for it and sued and everything like that. And it's just whatever. Okay, but today, there was a situation today in the in the gallery. It was, it's like a great big community room. There's a one of the, three of the residents were in there. At, there was Actually, I think there was like five people in there. But one of the residents, he used to be a preacher. I don't know what kind of preacher, but him and I get along. We've hit it off from the very start. I've known him, and, and we get along. We get to talking, 
and he was talking to a couple ladies and he got waved me over and got me involved in a, in a conversation and uh at that time i didn't you know what i i wasn't thinking about the rules i wasn't thinking about the the repercussions from it but he asked me a question and it got me going him and i back and forth talking about the Holy Spirit and understanding the Bible and, and having discernment for that and having the, the being able to, to gain the knowledge and of what the written word is saying. And, and they were asking questions and everything like that. And, and you know what? The, the thing of it is, is at, at that point, you could tell that they were interested. You could tell that we, we got to them. And with showing that my light, showing the light, I mean, he does it all the time. I mean, he's a resident. He can do whatever he wants. You know, so when he goes and calls me over, I mean, he knows what could happen. But he also knows that, hey, you know what? I know Dan. I know Dan's a Christian. I know Dan goes to church faithfully every time the doors are open. I know that Dan preaches sometimes. There's sometimes Milton and I will sit there and talk. We'll talk for, you know, half hour, 45 minutes just about something that's in the Bible, something that struck him that day or the week before. Or I'll talk to him about, hey, you know what? Here's a thought, something to think about, Milton, just something that, I don't know, maybe for you to, to mill around in your brain when you're sitting in your apartment later on this evening. And we'll sit there and talk and letting my light shine and telling him about my blessings. Telling, he'll tell me about his blessings. His blessings, today, he, you know what? Today he told me that his blessing, and he shared it with everybody today, he told me today that his blessing was the surgeries that he's had and the medical problems he had, he's in pain every single day. He counts that as a blessing because he knows he's still alive, and he knows that when God comes back, he's not going to have to feel that pain anymore. And that's his blessing. He told everybody, told everybody that. He told me that. And I was like, you know what? That's a good point, Mel. You know, and, and at, at that point, that kind of concreted me speaking on this tonight, showing your blessings. Because I'd already thought about it. I got a three-hour notice, like I always do. <laughs> But it's been on my mind, and then he told me about that, and it's like, you know what? That's the one. That's the one I'm going to do because you know what? I never would have thought about that. My shoulder. I'm. I mean, brother Kevin, you've had so surgery on your shoulder. Yep. I mean, I've had two on mine. I'm. I'm in constant pain. I mean, all the time. And you know what? Here's the thing. I never would have considered that pain a blessing to me, ever, until he mentioned it today. It never even dawned on me. It's like, you know what? He's right. He is absolutely right. Because when I get to heaven, I'm not going to have to be in this pain. My shoulder is not going to hurt. I'm going to be able to raise my arm above my head and not think about it. And, 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 and with that, that blessing, why shouldn't I let that, let that show? Jacob had a limp to remind him of his blessing that he got his blessing. He got what he wanted. And you know what? God didn't have to give him that limp, but maybe that's what God figured he needed to keep reminding him, you know what? I did give you your blessing. This is your reminder. Don't forget. With us, we should show our blessing all the time. No, no matter what. When we go out, and, and, I mean, and, and I'm starting to repeat myself a little bit, but when we go out, we, our light should shine on our blessings, okay? A lot of people go out, and they get saved, and they try to do their best and everything, and they pray for everything. They get their little blessings and, all, and everything. But then there's other people that they go, and they get saved. Even seasoned Christians will go and pray and pray and pray and pray and get a blessing and be like, oh, well, it's about time. And then they don't pray anymore until they need another blessing. 
But you see, the thing of it is, is it, it doesn't matter what it is. We need to tell everybody. We need to tell everybody. No matter how big, how small, it doesn't matter. It, uh, me, so, actually us, Sarah and I, our house, it's got holes in the top, bottom, and sides. It's leaking water everywhere. <laughs> I mean, this house is a wreck. But you know what? I have a place to live. I have a roof over my head. The roof isn't leaking yet. I don't have to stay at the mission. We don't have to stay at my truck. We don't have to stay at my in-law's house. You know what? I am blessed because I have. we have a place to live. We have a house. And you know what? It's a little it's a little beat up, but you know what? It's there. It's a blessing. I'm thankful for it. My car got totaled. I had to go get another vehicle. It's a little beat up. It's got some issues. But you know what? It's a blessing. I, I love that truck. It's a blessing to me because it starts up every morning. It goes down the road. I mean, a little rust falls off when I hit the bumps, but... <laughs> It literally came at a time, I mean, I was I was literally six hours away from losing the rental car, and I found that. And and it's it honestly, it's better than the car that I totaled. I mean, so I mean, and that's a blessing. So when I when I when I'm when I talk about letting your letting the light shine on your blessings, letting everybody know, letting people know that something happened to you, you should go out into the world and there should people should see, people should see a sign that you have been blessed. They should you should they should see a sign. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your apartment and you don't have the money for the car insurance, you don't have the money for the car payment, you don't have money for rent, all you have in the house is a, is a half a loaf of dried up bread and somebody gives you a jar of peanut butter to put on that bread, God just gave you a blessing. Tell people about it. Tell them. Because you know what? That right there could be possibly maybe like in today's situation when Milton was talking about his blessing and I was talking about my blessing that is the only church that Cookie has probably had in months and she saw it through Milton and I talking about our blessings and it went into the plan of salvation talking about God talking about religion and beliefs and 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 we got to her we got to her and I told Milton that later. I said, maybe not tonight, maybe not tomorrow, but you know what? She's going to come back because I don't know if you saw the look on her face, but she, it got her thinking. She's going to come back and she's going to ask questions. So be ready for it, Milton. And if you need help, you know where I'm at. And he's like, you're right. I will. You're right. You're right. All because we started, he started talking about his blessings started talking about his blessings. She started asking questions about the Bible, what was in the Bible, the Holy I mean, bunch of stuff. I mean, just skipping all around. But it all started because he said that he was blessed because he was in pain that day, and someday he wasn't going to have to worry about it. Someday. And I have to agree with that. So when we go out, we should have a glow about us of a blessing when somebody set, makes a comment to us. You know what? There's so you didn't look like this the other day. There's something about are you doing all right. Don't hold back. Tell them. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing great. I got a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> I, I'm blessed. I'm blessed because I got up. I could sit up on my own, under my own power, get up and walk into the kitchen to make a cup of coffee because I personally know somebody that can't do that. I'm blessed. But you know what? In her world, she's blessed because she just woke up. It's all a matter of, it's all a matter of, of uh, 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 per perspective. Thank you. Thank you. It's all a matter of perspective on where you're at. So, with, with, 
our blessings, we shouldn't be afraid to show them. Now, Jacob, he didn't have a choice. Jacob had to show his sign of what had happened to him. Whether he chose to tell people about what happened or not, that was, his, that was on him. But it was there. And, and the, the, there should always be a sign when we've had an encounter with God is what it basically comes down to. Anytime we've had an encounter with God, when we had a blessing or he's helped, helped us bless somebody else, there should be some kind of outward sign that people can tell that something wonderful just happened, that something great happened. A lot of things can happen, probably will happen, would happen, whatever. But if you're a Christian, if you're saved, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, your biggest blessing that we should be going out and telling people about is the fact that we've got Jesus and he died on the cross. That one of the biggest blessings, and I'm going to kind of go a little bit around the bush to get to this next, this next statement, but you can go wherever he's at and you can visit Muhammad's grave because Muhammad's laying in his grave. You can go to wherever he's at and Buddha, Buddha was a real person, right? You can go to his grave and you can visit his body, his grave. You can go to whoever, whoever it is that you want to go to that was a man of God, a holy man, whatever. You can go and you can visit their grave anytime you want, wherever it is that they're at, but I can't go to my God's grave because I, I, I serve a risen Savior. The grave is empty, and that right there should be the Christian's biggest blessing ever. And the only way that you can make sure that you're going to get that blessing, now this is more for the people online if they're watching, but the biggest, way, easiest way to get that blessing is if you can believe in the fact that Christ died for you and shed his blood and poured the blood over your sin and washed your sins away to believe in him because he says there's no way you can get to the Father without me and that was through his crucifixion, his death and resurrection due to the aforementioned empty grave and risen Savior to go to heaven to get that blessing. And we should, as Christians, tell everybody about it. No matter what, no matter where we're at, no matter the situation at all, no matter what. And today, I told Milton, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start bringing stuff in, and I can't pass this out, but I'm, I'll give it to you. You can. <laughs> you can. Nothing says I can't give it to you. And you know what? And, and that's the thing. We, there are so many people that are so scared to share that. And that is literally the biggest blessing that we have, that we need to talk about. Everything else, everything else is just frosting and sprinkles. We got the whole cake right there. All the rest of the stuff, the jar of peanut butter, the blessing after church, somebody handing you your car payment because your car is about ready to get repoed because you lost your job. That's just the icing on the cake because we're going to heaven. We get to see God. We get to come back to that army when God comes back and watch him annihilate the evil that's in the world so that he can build his new kingdom for us to live in. That right there is the biggest blessing. The biggest blessing ever. Now, I know Mr. Pip, he's been working on this message about what Christ went through for us, and I can't wait to hear it because I think there's a, a, lot, of, there's a lot of people are going to have their eyes opened. I mean, it's what, what, he, what Jesus did for us. Mm, I can't say as I'd do that because that just... Uh, I, mean, I cry when I stub my toe on the coffee table. <laughs> no, not really. 
Um, usually it's after Sarah trips me and I hit my head, but, um, <clears throat> but anyways, the, the thing is, is every time we have an encounter with God or with, you know, with Christ, with Jesus, God, when we have that encounter, we need to, there should be some kind of a, a display of that encounter, whether it's, hey, yeah, you know what? I am blessed. Let me, te- let, me te- let me tell you what happened last week. I mean, be bold about it. Be bold. Tell people about your blessings. Be bold about Because you know what? The world is not shy about telling you about the garbage that they're spewing. So why should we be mild and meek-mannered in what we believe? And in what we've got, what we've received, our blessings, what God's done for us, what 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 He is, what He has accomplished in our lives. My biggest blessing, other than the fact that I'm saved, is the fact of what the pit that He drug me out of. Through many channels, through my dad, my mom, my sister, Anna led me here and drug me out of the pit that I was in. And here I am, married to an absolutely amazing woman. I go to the best church in the entire world. People that I love, care about, respect. I mean, compared to what I came out of, you know what? I got a lot to tell people about. And I, and I do. I do. There's a couple people at work, so a couple of the residents, I kind of step out of line a little bit with them and tell them, you know what, you, you are, you're going to die. If you don't change, you're going to die. Because I was you seven years ago. You got to change. Let me tell you something. And I go through it. I'll take 10, 15 minutes to go through somewhat of my testimony, a little bit of my testimony, and tell them. Has it worked? No, but at least they heard it. They heard my blessing. So be bold in it. Don't hide your blessing. Show it. Show your limp. Jacob did. Not that he had a choice, but he did. And God blessed him beyond all belief. So when it comes to us and receiving our blessings, show your limp. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to walk straight. Show it. That was God. Hey, see what God did for me? Tell people about it. Because you telling people about your blessing is going to encourage them to go towards that blessing. Demand the blessing. Jacob demanded the blessing. He got a dislocated hip from it, a limp. He demanded his... He, God promises us so many blessings in the Bible. And you know what? I, I, can't, I, I can't really go and show you in the Bible where they're at, all of them. I'll show you a couple of them. I can show you... A few of them where it says that, yeah, I'm going to bless you if you do this. I'm going to bless you if you don't do this very easily. I, I, and, and, and you say, well, Brother Dan, you know what? I, I want to be blessed. I want to be blessed. I want to tell people about my blessings. How do I show? How do I let my light show? Well, the easiest way, the perfect one, go to Psalms chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. It's the easiest one to remember. It's the easiest one. Because he tells you, in David's, in David's song, in his poems, he tells, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You want to be blessed? Don't walk with people that do evil. That don't want to follow God. You want to be blessed? Don't stand in the way of sinners. Get away from your sin. Abstain from it. Get away from it. Throw the cigarettes away. Throw the beer can beer away. 
If you do whatever it is, whatever it is that your sin is, don't go with the people that are doing it. We've got a visitor from another property at our at our uh, at our our, uh, our 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 property this week for the rest of this week. Before I left work tonight, I got invited to go out. You know, co-workers. Go out, go to the tap house, you know, have a good time. Blah. It's like, nope, can't. Sorry. He's like, oh, come on, your wife's not gonna let you out. No, no, that's got nothing to do with it. One, I don't go to bars. Two, I'm a Christian, so I can't go to the bar. I could, but I won't, because there's no telling who might see me. God had see me, and and three. That that's not a that's not a life I live anymore. And they're like, oh come on, it's not gonna. I'm like, no, no, thank you. I'm not doing it. I have other obligations. I have church tonight. It's Wednesday. I have church tonight, and everybody's sick, so I'm up. You know, so I'm. Uh, no, I I won't. And uh, after that, the visitor, the visiting manager. She's like, I get it. I get it. It's not a problem. You know, we'll just, you know, we'll talk about the good times tomorrow, whatever. I'm like, all right, we'll have to do that then. You guys have a good time. Go have fun, whatever. But I, I got to go home. Uh, the next way, don't sit in the seat of the scornful. So don't, and, and all three of those things, if you don't do those, it says you're going to get blessed. And I'm here to tell you that if you do even one of those things, even one of those, it's going to put a spotlight on you to everybody else that there's something different about you. Will they come and ask you? Maybe. Maybe not. But you go through the Bible and it'll tell you what you need to do to be blessed. It'll even tell you what you can do to be cursed. I wouldn't advise following those, but uh, the uh, basically the point that I want to that the main point that I want to get to get across is that if you have an encounter with God mainly blessings, you need to let it show. Because that blessing that you're sharing or showing, they're going to see the difference, and that could be a blessing to them to encourage them to try harder, to work harder, to be, hey, you know what? I want what they have. I want to see that blessing in my life. I want to see that blessing come to my children. I want to see this blessing to, to, to help this person. And, it, and, and, it does, and when you start showing your blessings and giving blessings, you're going to start receiving more blessings to give other people blessings. And it's, it's, a, great, it's a domino effect. So the main point when you encounter God, when you have an encounter with God and he blesses you, there needs to be some sort of an outward show. There needs to be some sort of sign. There needs to be something about you that tells people, you know what? They encountered God. And that's all there is. If you want to be blessed, show people your blessing. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for everything. I want to thank you for your son and the gift that you gave us, sending him to die for us so that we didn't have to, so that we didn't have to go to hell. I want to thank you for him rising up. Lord, I want to thank you for for all the little things and all the small things you do for us. 
I want to ask that uh, that this might reach somebody and be a blessing to them. I want to thank you for everybody that is here that showed up and the people that might be might be watching. Um, I want to thank you for helping me out with this to so that I wasn't losing words and uh, bless us as we, we go home and finish out our evening and the rest of the week get us through till Saturday and Sunday in your name. Amen. <laughs>